welcome everyone. This is exciting. This is actually my very first YouTube live. Uh, I've never done this before. Somehow I do tons of lives on Facebook and I figure, okay, time to actually go live on YouTube. And I want to talk about alpha male versus beta male. And this is a really, really, really interesting topic and very important because we heal everywhere. Women want real alpha male. And then we don't actually know what alpha male really is. There is a lot of confusion among men and among women. So I wanted to go live and talk about it. So before we get into the, all the juicy stuff, I just wanna make a little note first. So look, this is not to point any fingers. Uh, for all the men watching, you may feel triggered at some points when I say something. You may realize that you do certain things, you engage in certain behaviors that are actually linked to the beta male energy. Uh, if that happens, I just invite you to be open. By the way, one of the characteristics of an alpha male energy is the ability to step away, zoom out, look objectively at things, take note and grow. So if you notice something in this, uh, in this YouTube live that triggers you, can you step up into the alpha male energy and just listen and see whether this is true for you or not? Uh, secondly, this is really, you know, we need to understand that no one is born an alpha male. We are grown into that energy. And so keep in mind that this is not to say that you're doing something wrong or that you are wrong in any way. Absolutely not. This is to give you guidance. What are specific things you can do and what to look at, look at to help you really lift your energy and like really step into this mature energy of the king of the alpha male. Uh, it's also to really understand what this energy means. Because like I said, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, and, and I'll speak more about why, because we don't actually make space for fire in our society. And we don't really understand what power is. We confuse power with force. So we're going to talk about this as well. And lastly, this is also for any woman who wants to learn more about men. So I don't know about you ladies, but I only want to date a true alpha male because I want to build something incredible in my life. I don't have time to date men who are not ready to build the kingdom. So for women who want this type of a relationship, this is a really good insight into recognizing a man who's already embodying the alpha male energy and if needed to guide your man if he is ready to step up into that energy. Now, one thing, I will have another video when I will talk about princesses versus queens, meaning a very similar concept, but for women. Because for men, you are stepping from a boy to a man, from a boy into the king, from a beta male into the alpha male. For us women, we step up from being a princess into being a queen. So I'll have another video where I'm going to give a different perspective towards women. Today, it's all about men. We're celebrating men and alpha males. So, like I said, there is actually a misunderstanding of what it means to be an alpha male. And this is linked to the fact that we confuse power and force. So, what is power? What is force? Well, all of this actually goes down to your uh, inner fire. So, what is your inner fire? This is your third chakra. And that's also the place of your ego. Now, if we talk about fire as the element, you know, what we see is like fires in California, fires in Australia, like we see the destructive power of fire. And because we know exactly how much fire can destroy, how terrible it can be, like we consider fire to be a natural disaster. So because of that, what we started doing as the whole society is just shutting the fire down. Because we're afraid of the fire, we don't know how to manage this because fire destroys. Let's just say that fire is bad. And what we've been doing for generations is suppressing the collective fire. Look at it. If we go back to Middle Ages, you had kings who had such strong honor that they would give their life for their country. We had knights and warriors who would again go and fight for something they believed in. That's the fire. How many of us have this quality now? Most of us are focused on my desires, my pleasure, what I want. And the qualities of the fire have been totally, totally just wiped out, basically, from our um, society. So we don't have the fire. But here's the thing. Yes, fire can destroy if it's uncontrolled, if it's all over the place. It can indeed destroy, kill people, cause a lot of harm. But fire that is managed 
And fire that is contained is really helpful because fire is what keeps you warm. At, you know, in the winter at night, you can have a fire and actually feel warm. It also can cook food for you. So fire brings a lot of gifts and benefits, but to receive those gifts, we need to learn to work with the fire, with the element of the fire. We need to learn to manage the fire and contain it. And that's what we're missing overall as a society. And that's true for women as well, but we're missing that ability to, to learn how to work with the fire. Because to work with the fire, because you can get burned, you have to be really strong. Like you work with fire under pressure. And these days, we don't honor pressure anymore because it's meant to be all easy. So men never, never go through the rite of passage. They never are under enough pressure, enough challenges to actually learn to conquer their inner fire. And that is one of the root causes why this alpha male energy is almost non-existent in our times. So I'm bringing this up because I want you to understand the overall like dynamic in the society, why that happens. So I'm not saying it's someone's fault. I'm just saying this is where the society is. So now because we don't understand how to work with the fire, we don't know how to manage the fire. What happens is that it's boiling up and then it blows up. Right. So if you try to suppress anything that doesn't go away, it's just waiting for a moment when we can blow up because there's all of this pressure. And that's exactly what happens. So the blowing up of fire, that's force. So you're forcing something into the world and like things which are, you know, very uh, specific here, but things like rape, like uh, uh, murder, uh, beating something up, all the fighting. This is force. This is the external blowing up of the fire because the fire hasn't been managed properly. Now, I know men who used to like get in so many fights when they were young. It's the reflection of the fact that there was no space for them to learn to work with their fire. So instead, all of this fire that they were suppressing just started shooting out, causing a lot of harm to other people and themselves. So it's not about the force. We don't want the force because the force is actually destroying. What we want is power. So while force is this fire being like basically blasted in an uncontrolled way outwards, power is, um, is, is the fire that's managed and contained. So this is within. Power is within. Force is outside. And that's the biggest characteristic of the alpha male energy. Alpha males... They have the power. These are men who have learned to contain and manage their fire. Now, what we see a lot in our society is men who pretend to be alpha males. So in a way, we have imposters, men who have so much force, and they're like, I'm an alpha male. Now, the funny thing is because as a society, we're so disconnected from the true essence of what power is, we indeed believe those men that this is what it means to be in inner fire. So when the fire is not managed, when it's not contained, it turns into arrogance, competition, imposing energy. Like, you know, you're sometimes around men who just like, like you just feel like they're imposing their fire on you. Like you, you feel like Jesus, like stop pushing with your energy. These will be also, uh, the unmanaged fire will also be expressed through overly being focused on the muscles, like, and I'll speak about this more about the physical strength, but this obsession with being huge and taking steroids, that's again, that's disconnection from your power. It's basically being pushy in life, like, like just pushy towards men, not being able to compromise, not being able to just listen, but pushy, pushy, pushy. Uh, unmanaged fire also doesn't feel good feeling and expressing emotions. It's not really good at like uh, loving communication. It has big ego and needs lots of confirmation. So now I want to go through six elements that are very needed for any man to um, work through to be able to step into the, this true alpha male energy. It's also for you to do a bit of a check with yourself. Do I do these things? Where do I stand with these six aspects? And like I said, for any woman who's watching who just wants to learn more about men and be able to pick the best partner, these are, these are things you want to pay attention to because these are potential red flags 
for you to know about. Um, someone is saying, I believe that men are born predominantly beta. We still have the fire, but don't know how to harness it because we live in a blue pill society. I fully agree with you. Yes. Like I was saying at the beginning, uh, the society doesn't make space for fire. We don't have, we lost the tradition of rite of passage. So there's no pressure being put on men to grow into this energy. If you look at schools, like if there's any challenge, any problem, moms come in and try to save the child instead of letting the child deal with the challenges on its own and build the fire and also unfortunately we live in times when we no longer have a uh, good father figures or these figures like what it means to be a man we don't have those examples so mostly men grow up without understanding what it means to be an alpha male and then we get this weird information from movies uh or or porn or uh like you know uh, fighters and all of this you know people who are just like i'm gonna kill you and and we think that this is alpha male energy so there's tons of confusion and men are not giving really a lot of chance to actually develop this energy so my intention with this video is to give you some insights uh, but one thing i'll add just before i go into this is that really the best way for a man to grow into the alpha male energy is through brotherhood with other men. As women, we have this crazy fantasy that for me, he's going to become the best man he can be. For me, he's going to become alpha male. And for me, he's going to become a king. And that's not how it works because this is about the masculine energy, about being a man and, and to know how to work with these energies. Men need to come together. As women, we have our work to do. Like I said, I'll speak about going from a princess to a queen. That's with women. Men, you guys need to come together. Like I'm giving you some insights, but the work is with other men. Okay, so let's look at these six elements. And I'm just going to start with the two most important ones. And these may be possibly things that you don't want to look at. Number one, it's a man's relationship with his father. Like I said, we don't really have father figures that teach men and boys what it means to be a man. Like you're being raised without an example of what it means to be a true alpha male. And unfortunately, what most fathers really end up demonstrating is uh, how not to be a man. Like literally, like a lot of boys, they hate their fathers, they resent their fathers because what the fathers have been doing is showing them how they don't want to be as a man in the world. So the, all the stories of fathers who are very strict and don't make space for any emotions. All the boys who would feel sensitive, who would feel weak or scared, and their father basically like shuts them down because if you cry, you're going to get punished. So this is not an example of an alpha male. Uh, a lot of boys are raised in um, households where the father is really mean to the mother. Uh, he can be beating her up he may be cheating right so again they see all of these energies and they're like I don't want to be like this so the thing is that most men if not every single man on this planet rejects their father okay now here's the thing there are reasons for that I get that and it's the same for women women reject their mothers there's lots of healing to be done there however as long as you reject your father you will never step up into the alpha male energy because no matter whether your father is a good example of being a man or not, he is showing you aspects of the masculine energy. Now, he may be showing you the shadow of the masculine, but this is still the masculine. So as long as you're rejecting your father, you're rejecting the masculine energy, you are rejecting being a man. So it's super crucial and it's fundamental for a man to heal his relationship with his father. Now, healing the relationship doesn't mean that now you're best buddies and you do everything together. It doesn't mean that you approve all of the behaviors of your father. Like your father in the, indeed can be a total asshole, you know, but it's about not rejecting them, accepting them. This is how they are, meaning you no longer engage energy in fighting them. Okay, you're neutral. You're this expression. I accept you. I understand why you are like this. I understand that you come from a different family where you are not given, you know, um, examples of how to be and that you're doing your best, even if that best is really bad. But unless you heal your relationship with your father, you will always be a beta male because you will be rejecting parts of yourself. 
And like I said, this is like the biggest one straight away. That's probably the one that we resist. Because again, for me as a woman, I have the same work to do with my mom. So I get that. I get that because we need, like man needs his father to show me, tell me what it's like to be a man. Give me guidelines, give me permission to be a man. And then you don't receive that. So I know it's challenging and yet this is essential. Um, okay, I'm just reading some comments. <laughs> so now the second one, and this is also difficult and this is something once again that men don't necessarily wanna look at. So I'm gonna bring it all up. Like I said, if you get triggered, look at it. So the second big aspect is your relationship with your mother. Now here is an interesting thing that happens. Because of the masculine feminine dynamic, we know very well that daughters have a tendency of being close with their fathers and sons have a tendency of being close with their mothers. The opposite energies attract each other. This is not any Oedipus complex. It's not about sexuality necessary, although Freud maybe would argue on this one, but uh, um, it is important to understand that you will have a stronger connection when it's opposite gender. And what happens is on top of this, you know, this is, this is the female body that carried you for nine months, gave birth to you and nurtured you with milk and held you and loved you in whatever way she did it. So of course, men are naturally very, very attached to their mothers. But here is what's important is that at some point you need to severe that relationship. You need to free yourself from your mother. And this is something that men don't necessarily want to do. Now, this may actually be in a twisted way that if you're resenting your father, right, you end up taking, um, uh, like pr prefer your mom. So basically uh, you take side of your mom because you see all the nasty things that your dad has been doing. You don't approve of them and you take the side of your mom. What happens often is if the mother is indeed mistreated or not fully loved by her husband, she may intentionally or not intentionally set the child against the father. And like I said, like women, we are freaking masters of manipulation. So it's not obvious, but damn, if we want to manipulate someone, we really can. So lots of mothers do that. Lots of mothers smother their children because what? I want love. So I have a fly up here. I want my child to love me, especially if I don't feel loved by my husband. I'm going to do everything to make sure that the child loves me deeply because I have my needs for love and connection. So mothers can be really, really, really manipulative. And as a little child, you don't fully see that. And also what happens often with men is that if you don't understand the games that your mom has been playing, you then go to... Uh, uh, you then go into a relationship or like some women start uh, uh, playing with you is you don't even understand this. So I actually had a situation like this. There was a woman in my previous relationship who was totally manipulating my partner. And like for me and any other woman, it was so obvious the games that she was playing. My partner was absolutely blind to this. Why? Because he hasn't seen through his mom's behavior so he doesn't understand how women get what we want so for most men your relationship with your mother is not exactly what you think it is so here is a good way to test whether your relationship with the mother is codependent or if it's neutral and mature and you do this by simply checking with, your, with yourself can you say no to your mom can you stand up to her now, I'm not talking about arguing with her because that's another reflection of resentment. If you resent your mom, you're going to fight her. But can you just with full power, with your fire, remember the inner fire, can, if she wants something from you, can you just say, no, mom, I will not do it. And she may be angry at you and be like, I understand, mom, I will not do it. And stick to your decision. So, like I said, this is very subtle, but at certain point as a man, you have to cut the umbilical cord. So women have this with their dads. Like when we become adults, we go through a whole new process of releasing our dads, which is painful. Men, you need to release your mom. So I have seen lot, lots of men who are like 
Like basically, if you think that your mom is like a perfect woman, and if you look at your parents and you only see the faults of your father, but not of your mom, that means you're codependent. It means that you're not actually seeing the truth of your mom. Because what you did is that you decided as a child that she's the perfect person and he is not. Right? Now, what happens if this, if, if this is really true for you? First of all, you remain a boy. You're still mama's boy because you're still dependent on her. You still worship her as in like, she is my goddess. She's my God. You look at your mom as God. You're not going to question her. You're not going to stand up to her. You're not going to point mom. What you're doing is not fair. Stop it. You know, you're not keeping your boundaries with your mom. Secondly, if your mom is so perfect, good luck trying to build a relationship because no woman will ever match to your mom. Now, again, I'm not talking about even necessary women who like consciously manipulate their children to still be in control over them. And like where a mother is like, this woman is not good for you. I'm talking about even very subtle dynamics. Like I had this in my uh, former relationship. I could never fully grasp what it was. But just the relationship between my partner and his mom just didn't feel right. And I, I, I cannot understand it with words, but I was just, you guys are too close. And what it really was, uh, as well as I can explain it, um, is that he still reached out to his mom when he needed affection and comfort. Now, these are the things we reach out for in our parents when we are children. As an adult, no more. You got to cut it. Like if you need affection, love, you got to find it within yourself. You got to take it from your partner and your friends. Like your parents are no longer there to, to comfort you. You're not a child. So you really have to look at your relationship with your mom. Is there any codependency? Are you like, like, are you treating her like a god, a goddess that like everything is perfect? Can you say no to her? Because that dynamic keeps you in a beta male energy. And again, this can be super subtle, but it's very, very, very important. I just want to look at some of the comments. Um, okay, so regarding this specific topic about moms, uh, there's quite a few comments. I don't think I'll be able to go through everything, but one is interesting. Do you believe that some can be alpha but not understand female nature? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. One of the things about being an alpha male is also having a refined uh, uh, feminine energy inside. And what I really like looking at is because we don't have examples really of alpha males within our human race, look at the animals. Like look at, look at a lion, for example, right? Or any other alpha male within the tribe of animals. They protect the women. They may fight other males to prove who's the strongest, but they always protect the females, right? So as a man, you have to honor and understand the female because the, the human female is very complex, right? Very, very complex. And this is also another thing you can look at. How do women relate to you? Do they feel safe around you? Can women easily orgasm with you? Because all of this is a reflection that a woman feels your alpha male energy and she relaxes and surrenders to you. So does she bloom and, 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 and flourish in your presence? If she doesn't, if she feels in any way shut down energetically in your space, it means that you're, you're not in alpha male energy, you're in beta male energy and you're suppressing her. You're imposing your force over her so she cannot blossom. So this is a huge thing to actually look at the women around you. Are women around you happy? Do they feel satisfied? fulfilled are they blossoming are they successful if they are not like women that you're very close to it means you are shutting them down that's on you that means you are in force and not power so thank you for this question um okay okay lovely so let's go to number three this is also a huge one and this is the ability to delay gratification there is the experiment, which maybe you have heard of, and it's called the marshmallow experiment. And it was done many, many, many years ago and then repeated thousands of times. Basically, you would have, you would take little children and you will tell them that you're leaving them in the room for about 15 minutes and there is a one marshmallow on the plate. And you tell them that if they do not eat the marshmallow until you are back, then they're going to get a second marshmallow. So what they're checking is, 
is the child going to give into the instant gratification of eating the marshmallow right away? Or are they able to de delay gratification to get more pleasure, meaning two marshmallows? And what they did is that they observed how would kids behave and then they actually followed those kids into the adult life. And what they realized is there is a correlation between ability to delay gratification and the success in their future life. And this is a huge thing for men. Huge thing for men. Why? Because your ability to manage your cravings is what defines you as a man. Think about when you're still a boy, everything excites you. It's like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. You're totally distracted and unfocused. And when, when you do that, you're losing your power. Anytime you go in different directions, you lose your power. Power, it's about being focused, present with direction, right? So this is your ability to have a vision for your life, to know where you're going, and, rem and know that this is what, what counts the most. And your ability to manage distractions on the way and all the cravings on the way. So in practical terms, what it means. At work, do you actually have a vision of what you're building? Like, do you have this grand vision? Do you know where you want to be in 5, 10, 30 years? And are you directing your energy and your time into making this happen? Or are you like, oh, there is this new thing and maybe this and maybe I'll try this. You know, if you, for example, know what needs to be done to be successful at work, do you do that or are you lazy? Or do you keep postponing and procrastinating? Procrastination, it's instant gratification. So how much discipline do you have in your business, in your life? Same goes for your body. You know, it's like, like if it's something you care about, like, are you willing to not eat crap food? Are you going to go to the gym and move and work out so that you have the strong body? Or are you going to be like, well, yeah, I kind of want to have a six pack, but I also want a donut. So, oh, well, I'm just going to have a donut. That says so much about your energy. So much. Alpha male is a man of focus. If you're not focused in life, you're not an alpha male. You're a beta male. And that also goes into your relationships uh, with women and your sexual cravings. One of the things of stepping into the alpha male energy is the ability to manage your sexual cravings. If you're someone, you look at a woman and you feel like you need to fuck every single woman you look at, you're a beta male. Now, this is not to say that you will not feel attraction towards women. You will. But it's about the ability to sit with the desire without the need to act on it. So, yes, if you cheat, if you cannot stay loyal to a woman, if you cannot commit to a relationship, if it feels like oh, this is too much responsibility, how will I ever be with just one woman for the rest of my life? That's still the better energy. That's still the desire to, to chase next shiny thing because an alpha male chooses fulfillment long-term fulfillment over instant gratification over craving cravings are for today only now an alpha male is someone who looks has the ability to look into the future who has a vision and mission for his life and he's not going to compromise it for some ridiculous little things that happen on the way sure temptations happen all the time but even look at the bible the story of jesus Satan was tempting Jesus. That's our life. How we manage our temptations is what defines our character. No man will ever be an alpha male unless you know how to deal with temptations and manage your cravings. So look around. Where are you lazy? Where do you miss? Where do you lack discipline? Where do you create all of the convenient stories to engage in something that gives you a high now? but it's going to cost you in long term, okay? Number four, okay, and let me just have a quick look. Um, by the way, Gibze, I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing your name, but thank you for your comments. <laughs> okay, so number four, physical strength and health. So actually, whether you are physically strong, if your health is good, it is also a symptom of power in alpha male. So if you're someone who's really weak, who needs a lot of medicine like to keep your health going that means you're in alpha you're in a beta uh, energy why because the power actually the power is energy 
And when your energy body is strong, it impacts the physical body. So in yoga, in Tantra, in all of like spiritual teachings, uh, it's recognized the true power doesn't really come from like how big you are, but it's the ability to channel the energy. So look, for example, at everyone who practices martial arts. They're not huge. This is not about the size of muscles. It's not about taking steroids and thinking I'm so big. Lots of men do it, but it's not the same. This is strength. You may, you may be skinnier, but your body is really, really strong, right? And your health is strong. Why? Because when you have strong fire, that's actually your immunity. The fire kills bacteria and viruses and anything else that doesn't serve you. So if you're someone who gets sick a lot, that's an insight for you. You're not in your fire. You're not in your power. So I actually, you know, and, and guys, I'm sure you, you've seen this as well. I'm someone who loves going to the gym. Like I, I love weights. So of course I go to the gym and I see lots of men, huge, clearly on steroids. But when it comes to ability to walk for five kilometers or run a little bit or lift something, they don't have the strength. Like they, they, do, they do some weights and then they hurt their back or they get sick or they have to take medications. And in fact, if they stop taking steroids, they will get really small and would lose the strength. Why? Because their physical strength doesn't come from within. It's not from the, from the fire inside. Again, it's force. It's induced externally. It's induced externally through different, like I said, steroids, testosterone, different medicine and all of this. So one of the big things is to actually check in. How is my health? And I'm a, am I a strong person? When you know that like, you know, you're not, you don't fall into sickness, you know that energetically you're strong. That is the sign of the alpha male. And think about it. Look historically, like we have, you know, situations of like, of um, certain uh, kings that would live super long time. They had incredible vitality and endurance, right? And like, they would just not get sick because that's the alpha male energy. And then you had like young kids who are still little boys, they're getting sick all the time and they couldn't keep the throne. So that is a big insight. And once again, if, you're, if your health is not in the, in the best state, Time to look at it, time to reconnect to the fire. Um, Steve Black says, not sure that is correct. An alpha, like in all creatures, will take all females and eat first. Beta are second in all counts. Discipline is in my front. Depends. It depends. Uh, like I said, uh, like you're taking care of your needs because you know that you're the king, that you need to survive. But there is a huge sense of responsibility for the tribe. The alpha will not take away fruit from the food from the tribe if it means the tribe is going to die. Because what's the point of being alpha or a king if there is no kingdom? Like one of the things that defines a king is the kingdom. So if you are destroying your own kingdom to gain from it, you're not an alpha male. You're selfish. You're still a beta male. And that's, that's again, this is like, you know, how as a man do you show up for your family, for your friends? Like, like, are you someone who cares about other people? Do you help people or are you just focused on your own needs? Like what I said before, is there ability to compromise? Do you care about other people? Like, like a true king will not allow his land to be, you know, his, his people to starve. Like he's going to do everything he can to, to protect the people. That's the energy of the alpha male. Okay, we have two more. Now, this is something I wanted to add because it feels small, but it's also interesting. And I think it's good to look at. So number five is regression into the child. So when we get into relationships, intimate relationships, something that happens is that our inner child comes up and that's normal. We all know it, that all of the uh, trauma and pain and wounding from our childhood will come up. So one of the things that happens in relationships is we regress into the child. So what, I, what does it mean practically speaking? It's making baby sounds, baby voices and all this like, baby come here I love you all of this right now women are the ones who usually do it and again it's our sign of regressing into a little girl and not being a woman but men can do the same okay men can regress into the child as well and do all the baby talk and like kitty 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 right or I don't know if you can look at yourself have you ever done it that you were with a woman she wanted to go she wanted to leave and go back home and you wanted her to stay so she'd be like 
no, please stay. I want you to stay. And you're just kind of turning into a baby, right? No alpha male would be turning into the baby because that's the opposite energy. So once again, something to look at. Are you someone who enjoys this little cute little games? That anytime you do it, you regress to a child. And a child, by definition, is not an alpha male. You have to realize that this regression, it's one of the coping mechanisms. It's basically, if I make myself a little boy, then she will take care of me. Now you're replaying dynamic with your mom. So once again, we're going back to the point number two, which is your relationship with your mom. And if you're someone who's still codependent on your mom, you may find it very likely for yourself to regress to a child in a relationship. So, right? All of these cutie things, which are not so cute because they actually pull you out of the energy of a true man, a true alpha male. So also something to keep an eye on and for all of the women watching a red flag if that happens in your relationship. And now the last one. The last one is, look at the quality and the type of women that you have been dating. Or for women, look at what are the other women that your man has been with. Why is this important? Because when a woman is in her queen energy, when she is empowered and powerful, if you're not in your alpha male energy, you won't be able to handle her. She will be too much. You may try to suppress her, pull her down, but eventually you won't be able to stay in a relationship like this. And for you guys, all the men watching, this may be something you've experienced. Like there was this woman who was extremely fascinating, but you're like, uh, she's too much. Um, or you may just thought, oh, wow, she's like too sexual. She's too successful. All of two something, right? So looking at the quality of the women that you've been dating. So for example, if you're someone who dates very young women, and this is by the way, not to say that young women cannot be mature, but there is a difference between a 21 year old and a 35 year old woman. There is a different experience, different energy, like just totally, totally different dynamics. So if you're a man in your thirties or forties and you date someone who's significantly younger than you, that says that you are not an alpha male. What I mean by this is for this little girl, this little princess, no matter what you do, she's going to look up to you and be like, oh my God, you're such a true man. Your ego gets stimulated. But a true woman, a queen, will look at you and she was like, dude, grow up, step up. You're acting, you're acting like a child. She will not let you regress to a child. She will almost force you to come up and step up. And so if you're not ready to step up to the alpha male energy, you will not be able to be with a powerful woman. So again, look at the woman that you're with, like a woman you're dating now and the woman you've been dating. Are these true queens? Are these powerful, independent, liberated sexual women? Or are all these like these little girls who just want to take care of you and whose main mission in life is to make sure you're happy? Because what you're getting is a little princess, a little girl. And like I said... A beta male feels like alpha when he's dating a little girl. But a true alpha male would not allow such a woman around him because that's not his level. So that is another thing. You got to look at yourself. Who are you dating? Who are you dating? And I have to be honest, for me, I never enjoyed like looking at exes of my men. But that is an insight. This is an insight. If he decides, if he's in his 30s or 40s, and he, just, he was dating or he decides to date a 20-year-old woman, to me, that's a red flag. You're, you're not in your alpha male. You're so far from being an alpha male that you don't even want to face that. Because oftentimes when you get in the relationship with like just a little girl, a princess, like someone who will not demand of you to step up, it's because you are not even ready to look at the fact that you're far away from the alpha male energy. So again, be honest with yourself. What's the quality of a woman that you're dating? Is she a true queen? Because a queen can only date a, queen, a king. Or is she a princess? Because a princess will be dating a boy. And like I said, I know that some of these things may feel like, okay, I don't like what you're saying. But this is the thing. A character of a man is created under pressure. So this is pressure for you. How are you showing up in all these six aspects? Like, what's your relationship with your father? Is it healed? Are you still codependent on your mom or have you separated yourself? Can you focus on long-term fulfillment versus cravings in the moment? Is your physical st strength and health good? 
Do you regress and act like a baby in a relationship? And what are the women that you're dating? I know this may be challenging and I know this may feel uncomfortable and you may not want to face that. But once again, one of the characteristics of an alpha male is the ability to not be, not take everything personal, but actually zoom out and see, okay, I recognize that these behaviors are draining my energy and my power. And I hear the feedback and I know that this would help me. So I'm going to listen to the feedback and do my best to step up. So that's again, a bit of an insight for you. I just want to have a look at some of the um, of the comments. Steve, I'm just going to be straightforward. Um, I think it's BS what you're, what you're writing. You're saying that alpha is selfish. I absolutely disagree. In fact, if I may say, this is still being stuck in the beta energy. And I'm just calling you straightforward in this Facebook Live that what you're saying to me, it's exactly the opposite of being an alpha male. And I hope that one day you're going to see this. Um, Okay. Okay, love. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, you know, so like I said, it was my first Facebook Live. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna go again live in a few days and talk about princesses versus queens. So I hope that this also will be helpful. And once again, that's gonna be for women and men, for women to be able to step up, because we gotta step up as well, and for men to help you pick um the the right partner because if you if you're someone who is an alpha male or you aspire to step up into that energy that you gotta have a queen because because again a little girl will be pulling you down into the beta energy if you really want to be an alpha male and build something incredible build your kingdom then um then uh then yeah you want a queen and so Stay tuned into this channel, subscribe, because I'll be going live in the next few days, maybe next week, to share on this one as well. So thank you so much for everyone who was here live, for everyone who commented and asked your questions. And yeah, just super, super grateful. Have a beautiful rest of your weekend, guys. Mwah.